Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to be doing an in-depth crash course for beginners on Luminar Neo. What's, what is the software, how to use it, and a lot of the different tools within it so that when you use the software, you know exactly what to expect and more importantly, how to get the most out of it so you can get the best results for your business. Now, photographers, print-on-demand people, and anything in between can, or anybody in, in between can use this software and get a good benefit out of it. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this crash course tutorial so I can show you exactly how to use the software so you can get the most out of it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and take a look at the left-hand side. We have the all photos, sample photos, single image edits, recently added, recently edited, lost edits, and trash. These are just different categorization for all your different images. For example, here you have your sample photos that come with Luminar Neo so that they can show you how to use certain parts of their uh, software. And then, of course, you have all photos. Most of the time, I'm just here in the single image edits. Not that it really makes a critical difference, but when I upscale an image, I have a folder for upscale where the images are actually upscaled. Now, some of you might recognize a lot of these different photos is because I use this computer specifically for YouTube. And um, I have here these different photos that have been upscaled from a previous tutorial of mine which I'll show you how to do today. But regardless, let's go back to our single image edits. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the top side now, the top uh, bar. And you have here a catalog button, a presets button, and an edit button. Let's take a look at what these actually are and what they actually mean. So the catalog just shows all the different images in that specific folder. Okay. Um, so if I select upscale, it will show all the different catalog of images in the folder. All right. If I select a preset, I have no set or saved presets, excuse me, uh, and I'll show you how to save one today in today's video if we have the time, but any kind of image in the presets, I will go ahead and have presets allocated. You can see here there are some basic presets to the right hand side. Okay, these are not presets that I created, but they're presets that exist. And then we have some other presets up here that could potentially work. We have Filmatic, Influencer, all these kind of things that can shift the way that the image looks. If I click on it, it will apply all the settings in the edit column. And the edit column here is the right-hand column where you do most of your editing. So let's go ahead and now begin editing a photo and select a photo to edit so we can experience the software completely. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on the upscale portion of the video. So if you want to upscale your photo, what can you do? Let's go ahead and select a photo first. Let's select this one here, the one in the middle. And this photo here, it currently sits at 1856 pixels by 2720 pixels. And if you want to ever know the dimensions, you just go to the catalog, click on the image, and look to the right-hand side, and you can see the data for that image. If you ever want to upscale, you just take it, hold, click and hold, then drag and drop and into the upscale bar, and then hit upscale. In order for you to have this upscale feature, this feature is an extension that you receive when you have specifically Luminar Neo. Luminar has different products and different features that they offer, and I'll leave a link in the description for specifically Luminar Neo if you're looking to upscale. And if you could see here, the upscale is not the only feature that they offer, and I'll actually show you what I mean by that when I go over here back to my single image edits. If I click here on my extras button, these are the extras that I have already installed. We have HDR Merge, we have Noiseless, we have Upscale AI, we have Background Remover, we have Focus Stacking. These are also Super Sharp, also Magic Light, but, but these are all features, or extensions rather, that are within Luminar Neo. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense right there. Now, this image is now upscaled, but it still sits at the same size. To be able to grab that upscaled image, you have to locate it in the upscaled folder, and then go ahead and scroll all the way down. Let's go ahead and do that, and select the actual image, all right? So you can see here, this is now the actual image that has been upscaled. Let's go ahead and work on some edits and understand what are these edits 
for the image. The first group of edits we're going to take a look at is we're going to take a look at the presets. And something I want to call your attention to is the bottom portion of the image. You can see here there are a few buttons and let's take a look at what those buttons actually are. The first button is the preview button. And this preview button, if you click on it, it shows what the original image would look like. In our case, we didn't really make any changes to the image, so the image is exactly where it was. Then we have here the before and after button, which will have a bar that we can drag left and right to be able to show us the before of how the image looked, and then finally the after. And then here we have the zoom of how zoomed in or out we are on the image if we want to zoom in all the way for example like this that's 2891 percent this is sitting at 127 percent and then this is 21 percent so these are examples of how zoomed in and then finally we have actions we have two actions currently which revert to the original and save as a preset which once again I mentioned presets earlier where I'll show you hopefully if we have time how to add images or how to add or save specific presets Let's go ahead and jump into selecting some of these presets. So let's look at this one, for example. This preset is called the influencer preset. If we select this preset, there are certain things that are loading within the preset. And we actually did this on purpose for the tutorial that you could see here when you first have these images uh, or first select on a specific preset that maybe you've not used before, the preset will load. It will load all of its features and settings. And once it's loaded, you won't see the wheel turning anymore, but you'll see a clickable image. And take, when you take your mouse and hover over these specific presets, it changes the way the image looks. So the image goes from this to this, for example. This is the Nighthawks preset in the Influencer Collection. This is the Cozy Den preset within the Influencer Collection. This is the Eventide preset within the Influencer Collection. This is the Evening Glow preset. This is the light wash preset. And this is the winter refuge, refuge, excuse me, preset. And so there are many different presets. I think out of all of them, maybe for this specific image, mine is winter refuge. But either way, each preset is a little bit different and should be treated differently depending on the situation. Let's go ahead and take a look at another collection like monochrome. And let's wait for the presets to load within monochrome. And we could see that this collection here is more of a black and white type collection. Let's see here. We just have a few more loading, or one more rather. Let's view them. So this is the Elegant Matte. This is the Soulful. This is the Film Grain. This is the Lighthouse. And this is the Low Key. So once again, you could see the differences and how it does shift the image because it indeed does shift the image it changes the way the face looks you can see here this one for example the the face is more slim in this image and this one is a little bit larger right so these kind of details do make a difference and it's just a window uh, to show you what the future holds when we jump into the edit section Let's go ahead and click on some of these essentials to the right-hand side. So, for example, if we click on this Big City Lights uh, collection of presets, we have a few pre uh, presets currently loading. We have Frosty, City Thrills, B&W Streets, Electric City, and Street Theater. Let's click on some of these and view the changes that they make. So, this is the Frosty preset. This is the City Thrills preset. This is the B&W Streets preset. This is the Electric City preset. And then finally, we have Street Theater preset. Okay? So, a bunch of different ones there. All right? So, now you kind of understand what presets are. And these are pre-made categories of presets. You can create your own presets, which, once again, we can talk about that in the future. If you want to ever see certain categories, you can go ahead and scroll all the way down. And you'll see all the categories of presets that currently exist. And for different images that you have, different presets will apply. Then let's go ahead and click on Edit here. When we click on this Edit button, now we have this forte of all these different settings to, to use to our edit. Let's go ahead and take a look at one edit per test time, right? So first thing we have is the two favorites up here which are the Enhance AI and the Sky AI. But before that, we do have some other edits, but they're not as cosmetic. They're more 
structural. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. We have these two tools up here called the Crop AI and the Layer Properties Pro. These two edit editing tools are more structural based tools. Let's go ahead and take a look at the crop for example. In the crop, we can have a ratio based crop where you cannot change the height or the width specifically of the image freely, but you can only change based on the current frame that it resides in, right? Or we can go ahead and click on this original and we can select free. Free as in free motion to crop as we feel. So for example, if I wanted to move this all the way down and then crop just the bottom portion, I could do that. And I can hit apply here and it will form that crop for me. You could see here it says applying crop. And indeed it does. If I want to go ahead and view the original once again, call your attention to the bottoms of the buttons on the bottom, I just simply click the little eyeball and it will go ahead and do that for me. In my case, I want to revert completely to the original of the image. The image is this. It is not the crop. I do not want the crop, obviously, for the functions of this video. Now let's go ahead and get back to the actual editing portion of the video. Okay, so now that we're here in the edit section, and we know what crop is, let's take a look at layer properties. So layer properties refers to the left hand side when we begin to add layers to the image. If we wanted to add features like, let's say we wanted to add sparks to the image, we could do that. For example, let's take a look at these sparks here. These are sparks that I have now added to the image that can be moved around and could be altered. In my case, I don't want, and I have no intention of adding sparks, so I'm gonna go ahead and right click on the sparks image and hit remove layer. And now I have officially removed that sparks layer. And there are different ways of playing around with the masking of that specific layer. It can be brushed on, it can be radial, or it can be added as a whole, which is exactly what you saw. So there's different ways of adding those layers, okay? Let's go ahead and continue to move on. Here we have our favorites now. We have Enhance AI and we have Sky AI. Sky AI is a feature that is more used for an image in a different scenario. Maybe not this image, but more like this image. And I'll actually, I actually added this specific image for this very purpose. This image is taken by a photographer and we can actually utilize Sky AI in this specific use case. Let's go ahead and actually use it live. So let's say we use Sky AI here and we want to add Northern Lights or this galaxy effect to our actual image. We can do that. So we can look through these different effects here and let's say we want to use, let's say this one. I can go ahead and click on it. It's called Galaxy One. And I'll click back here and I can apply it to the actual image. So this is the sky effect and I'll go over here to masking and I can see how it's on already. As you could see, it has now shifted the way that the image looks. If I wanted to brush it in kind of like this, I could do that as well. Of course, the image doesn't look as real, but the AI works in a way where it will apply it to the whole entire image in its own uh, AI understanding. So it'll look something like this, right? And so that is using Sky AI, which shifts the whole entire image completely. You know, this image and this image are definitely not the same image, and the effect of it are completely different, okay? So that is Sky AI. Uh, as an image, okay? And actually, I think I like the way that it looks, so I can leave that the way it is. In fact, I could actually play around with the different uh, settings. So, for example, if I want to use this one, if I want to use this one, if I want to use this one, which is a little different, uh, if I want to use this one, which is probably pretty unique for all the other softwares that I've seen out there, because this is a feature, like I said, that can shift the entirety of the image. So this is a sky that's saved. This is a sky that's saved. So many different uh, ones out there, right? And they do shift the, the internal reading of that specific image and exactly what's going on in that image, right? So now that we went over Sky AI, let's go over Enhance AI. Enhance AI is going to enhance particular accents of the image. It can also enhance the sky effect of the image. And there's two bars here that represent that. And we could actually do that. So let's go ahead and take Accent AI 
and let's drag it all the way to the right hand side. And what these accents are, are when things are brighter or when things are darker, it will amplify those specific effects. And we could see that here. So if I go here, this is what the image wants to look like. This is what the image is. We could actually check our before and after on here as a perfect example. Do you see how that is right there? For example, this section here, you could see specifically on this cabin, the wood is a little bit darker, but here it's a little bit brighter. The snow, for example, exemplifies that as well. Um, we have darker, almost like a darker hue. Then here we have almost like a lighter hue. And that's also because the way the AI image reflects on the snow. So it looks uh, very in tune, very different, right? And you could see that little before and after setting kind of used there. And we can play around with that. And we can drag Accent AI all the way to the left-hand side. And this is what the image looks currently. We can enhance the sky. So we add more color to it. We're enhancing its effect. We can drag Accent AI all the way to the right-hand side as well. All right? So it just depends on what you feel is a good uh, amplification to the image if that's what you want to go ahead and use. Very useful for photographers in their specific use case. Let's go ahead and now continue. We have extensions. These are extensions that we have mentioned earlier in the extra section that have been installed on my end. I have Noiseless AI, Super Sharp AI, and Magic Light AI. All of these different uh, extensions will amplify the image in their own ways respectively. Magic Light AI will light up certain things that are already tend to be brighter or bright. It will light them up even more. Super Sharp AI will add extreme detail. So for example, like the snow, you could already see the snow. It will make it even more detailed. Um, noiseless AI will decrease the noise. So in a way, Noiseless AI and Super Sharp AI kind of contradict one another because Noiseless AI decreases that noise, decreases that specificity to the image. And as we all know, noise does increase the specificity to a specific image. And then here, Super Sharp will do the opposite. So let's go ahead and take a look what the image will look when we apply, for example, Magic AI. So all you have to do is click on this little drop down for Magic AI and increase the intensity of it. And you could see, for example, on this light, that it perfectly shows or reflects what, what uh, Magic, AI, uh, Magic Light does. Right? I'm going to drag Magic Light all the way up, and there you go. And that does shift the image, right? It does shift the image on a small scale, right? So you can see here how that changes. And I think it actually changes the image for good, so I'm going to keep that the way it is. With Magic AI, there are tons of different features. You can edit clearness, brightness, glow, so many different things. So, for example, if I want my glow to be higher, there's the glow. If I want the glow to be a little bit lower, there's the glow, right? So the size... Right, I think it's actually um, toggled exactly where it needs to be, and I think they did a great job with that. Super sharp. If I want to make it more sharp, right, I can have a universal sharpness or a motion blur. There's so many different things that I could do. I'm gonna leave it alone. Let's say I want it to be less noisy or noiseless AI. I can go ahead and apply a medium noiseness, and you could see here how it's doing its own thing currently on the image. It's analyzing the the image. And there we go. It had a, now applied the noiseless AI. And you can actually see the change significantly in the sky of the image. In fact, I would say that it hurts the image overall when the sky has changed. But that's what noiseless AI does. And of course, I don't want that feature in this section. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit reset here and go back to what originally it once was with the more noise. I think the noise helps in this specific image. Let's go ahead and continue now. We have our essentials. We have develop, erase, structure, color, black and white, details, denoise, landscape, and vignette. I think I like these features, the essentials, more than any other in any other uh, uh, you know, tool. Let's go ahead and utilize them in an image like this one. So this image right here, I can go over here and hit edit. And let's begin editing with the essentials. Let's take a look at develop first. Develop, I can go ahead and take the smart contrast feature, which is something I love to do, and turn it all the way to the right. And what it will do is it will develop the contrast, or the contrastity, if that's a word, of the image. It will make what's ever more darker, darker. It will make what's brighter, brighter. And it will make certain images stand out a little bit more because of the details in that image that once exist. 
So for example, when I take smart contrast and I set it back to what it originally once was, look at how dull the image may seem. When I drag it all to the way to the right, it seems that it has more, well, contrast. The image is more, has more contrast, and that's exactly what it is, right? And we could see here the before and the after, before and after. If I want to see a line kind of division between the two, we have a perfect division right there. You could see it in the color, right? This section gets darker, these get brighter, and these are just simply more dull. This section is more dull, and you can tell the difference pretty dramatically, okay? Exposure is going to make certain things brighter. It's going to make it more exposed. So if I drag it all to the way to the right-hand side, you can see it's so exposed that the image actually gets washed out. And if I drag it all to the way to the left, it gets less exposed. Some people like a less exposed look, right, versus a higher exposed look. You can kind of uh, make your own decision on that. And then here we have shadows, of course. So if I move it to the right-hand side, there are less shadows. And move it to the left-hand side, there are more shadows, Okay. I actually like it with less shadows, or more shadows, rather. Brings more amplification to the distance of the image. You can tell that the mouth and the nose are closer to you than, for example, the forehead, right? And that's what shadows is really good at doing for an image. Here we have highlights, right? It just continues to further exemplify that certain colors are going to be brighter and certain are going to be darker. If I move it to the right-hand side, right, the light blues get even lighter and the dark reds get, uh, the excuse me, the bright, the bright reds get brighter and more dull, okay? So you want to play around with those. Let's go ahead and bring that back to zero. Let's go ahead and play with some blacks and whites. The blacks and whites is simply just an amplification or development of the color black, and the color white. So for example, the color black, there's some significant, there's a little bit of blacks in this image. Okay, if I move it to the right hand side, those once blacks are now brighter. I move it to the left. What was once somewhat black or on the black hue is now much darker. It's a useful tool when you used in moderation, I think, you know, something like this, for example. And same thing with the white, just the opposite, right? So if I move it to the right hand side, Things that are already bright get much, much, much whiter. And then here, get much darker. So keep that in mind when you're using this feature. Okay, so let's go ahead and move that to zero. Maybe even move this a little bit to the left. Okay. We have curves. Curves is where it will completely change the color of the video, of the image. Excuse me, I was going to say video there. But you can work by curving these lines Right? And I think I need to have a whole different lesson on this and explain kind of how this works. But you can see here, I'm not going to get into it today. There's a lot of different changes that you can make to the image. Right, If I want, for example, my reds to look a little more neon, I could do this. If I want my blues to look a little bit more damp, I could do that. Or even amplify them a little bit more. There's a lot of different things I could do. I'm personally not going to mess with this in this video. Uh, the curve section because there's a lot to it. So I'm going to go ahead and reset that and just bring my smart contrast up, bring my exposure slightly down, and then bring my shadows a little bit down as well so we can go back to our, the original source of the image. But the curves is definitely something you want to look at. Colors. The colors here is where I can select what I want these colors to actually exemplify. So if I want more cold temperature, right, which would mean the decrease of things that are you know, hot in the image, I move it to the left, right? And you can see here what's red has now become purple and what's blue has now just stayed more blue. What's been dark has been more cool, right? And me personally, like I said, I'm not a, fa a fan of that in this specific image, but it does change up the tint. Here we have the tint. If you want to amplify the greenery or the the uh, antithesis of that, which is more purple color. Here you have saturation. So the colors become more saturated uh, towards a certain hue. So for example, if I move this towards the red, the whole entire design will be more saturated with red, even though what once may have not been as red as moving towards that. And then we have finally vibrance. You can create some odd combinations when you increase vibrance all the way and you play around with things like saturation. Uh, very, very interesting, the results that can come out of that. But generally, we're going to leave this where it is because every image is not equal, I guess you could go ahead and say. Here we have sharpness, okay, which will increase the detail of very specific aspects of the image. 
So I can increase my sharpness here, move it all the way to the right hand side. And there you go. There are certain aspects of the image that are much more sharp than they were before. And speaking of sharpness, you can work on the radius of that sharpness, right? So in reference to the whole entire image, there are certain things that are not, uh, I guess you could say, accounted for on the corners and things like that. If the radius is larger, it will count for less, right? Versus, or excuse me, if, yes, it will count for less versus if there is no radius, um, then it will count for more, okay? Or vice versa. Sorry about that. Vice versa. All right. Now let's go ahead and continue. Let's go ahead and first of all, uh, leave that the where it is. We have noise reduction. So noise reduction is once again, those features in the image that are, well, noisy. There's different features in the image, like particles, you know, things like that, uh, in the image that change how the image looks. If you like less noise, then you can decrease or increase its luminosity. Right, so I can increase the luminosity of the actual image to decrease the value of the noise. This is an example of noise right here. These dots, this is what we call noise. If I decrease the luminosity, it's almost like the noise exists a little bit more. Right? If I increase the luminosity of the actual image, the image actually gets brighter, the noise decreases in brightness. That's important to understand. Okay? Then finally, we have here, or not finally, at least not yet, we have optics. The optics is the lens distortion and the basically the view how the image is going to look. So first of all, I can have an auto defringe. An auto defringe is nothing more than automatically changing up the angle of the image. And you can see here it hasn't really changed much. And here we have lens distortion. So I can distort to the left, right? And what that does is makes the middle more forward and the back further, right? And then I do the same thing here where it makes the middle more further and the, f and the outside here more front. And this is just for spacing. You could see here how the, sh how the image does shift. And if you noticed when we were playing around with the presets of the image, um, in, the, in this image, I'll go ahead and show you here in this image, the face was thinner at one point uh, when we were editing certain presets it's because of this feature right here. So that is something to keep in mind. If you ever want to delete an edit, you just go over here to your edits, and then you go over to that specific uh, section. So let's just say it was transform here, and I can go over here and discard it. So I can discard edits and discard all the edits entirely and uh, take care of that. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about our vignette. And this is actually a better example here that we're showing this is because the vignette is the darkening of the rounded edges and it will get more rounder and more dark as, as you amplify it. So let me show you how that looks. So I can go ahead and move this to the left-hand side and then boom, it will go ahead and do a vignette. The thing that I like about the vignette here is it's smart. It's a smart vignette. And it doesn't just create this, this very abstract black circle around you could just see it looks almost a little natural when we show the actual image so that's something to keep in mind as well and when vignettes are on I like to hit develop smart contrast turn the contrast up um, sometimes I might even like to do one first the other one first so for example I'll go over here and hit edit discard my edits start from the beginning I'll go over here into develop and that will shift the image and it will develop the red a little bit more and then I can go over here into my vignette and work the vignette right here. So let's go ahead and click on it and bring it there. So you can see here this example of the image is not as washed out as the, the red is not as washed out as the other one was when we worked the vignette first. Let's go ahead and talk about darkening parts of the image, which this is not something that is directly shown here. But if we go over here to develop, we can go over to masking. And masking is actually a feature in a lot of the different effects here in Luminar Neo. And all I have to do is take the brush and paint over certain parts that I, let's say, want to mask. I want to make it darker, for example, right? Let's say all this kind of stuff, the four corners, for example. I can go over here after I've done the masking and just simply decrease the exposure. And do you see how that shifts the image now? Hopefully you can see that when I move it le left to right. And that is a perfect example of what masking will do.
okay? And if I want a little bit more in the image that's masked, I just use the, my nifty uh, little arrow here and just, you know, simply paint over it kind of like that if I want to do some manual corrections. We have another feature called landscape, which we haven't spoken about, but landscape is typically more if the image has different layers to it, not from a physical sense, but from an image perspective sense. So for here, we have a layer of the face, we have a layer of this red that's around, and then the background. I can go over here and hit dehaze, and the image will dehaze the image by changing up how the image looks from those different uh, layer perspectives. In fact, we could actually see here the before and after. It's not much of a crazy change. You could see the, the layers haven't really changed, but it does take out certain blurriness to the image, um, especially because it most images, when they're taken as a photograph, especially when you shoot them in RAW, they look almost like a, like a 2D image. But when you turn dehaze on, it almost now becomes 3D. And you'll, you'll see that when you actually use a very specific image. I don't think I have a good example here. Maybe we can test this one. Let's go ahead and jump over here, test this one. Let's go into landscape. Let's go to dehaze. And uh, I wouldn't say that this fully gives a, a good example of this, but it definitely has a dehaze. And you can see um, there's a foliage enhancer and a golden hour. And the, the foliage enhancers, of course, if you have greenery in the image, it will enhance that foliage, which does shift the layers of that landscape image. All right. Let's go ahead and continue to work this here. We have now creative. Okay. So with creative, we have relight, we have atmosphere, sun rays, dramatic mood, toning, matte, mystical, glow, and film grain. Let's work our way from the bottom to the top. Film grain is very simple. If I want the image to look a little bit grainy, I just literally turn this up just like that. And you can see here now the details of the image. So let me zoom in here so you guys can see the mouth of the, of the what is this, a gorilla? The mouth of this gorilla, you can see, this is without film grain, and this is with film grain. There are certain elements of time where film grain works well. In some instances, it doesn't. You know, you just have to treat it individually. We have glow. Glow is going to make the brighter aspects of the image more bright. And I know that might sound obvious, but let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. So, boom. So, you can see how this is now whiter when I turned glow all the way up. So, this is without any glow, and this is with glow. Okay? It's a very, very subtle uh, change in this image, but I could actually show you a real life image here, um, like this one, where we turned glow all the way up, and you could see how the image shifted from here to here. All right, so this is these are live examples, and this is why it's important to show you guys different images of how this feature works, because every image is a little bit different. When you have an image that's typically more brighter in nature, the glow is going to amplify itself a lot more. Okay. The antithesis to glow is mystical, and mystical makes things that are dark already darker, and I'll show you kind of what I mean. So this image is relatively dark in nature. It's blue. It's got blacks in it. I can increase this and watch this. Do you see how it instantly became darker? It removed that glow off of the images, which is pretty cool. Something that I've noticed with certain images is when you <clears throat> increase mystical and you decrease or and you increase the glow. It does shift the nature of the image entirely. In fact, it actually makes it look more realistic. So this was the original, and this is what it looks now. If I turn down glow, it looks more like of a just a dark drawing. And then I turn up glow, it almost looks more realistic to me at least. And we're actually going to leave it where it is, so let's continue. We have next matte. Matte is simply just going to burn out a lot of the contrast in the image. And I'll just show you what I mean. There you go. It, it just, it's not ideal, at least for me. And it does have that matte effect, and it's highlighted when you look at the black aspects to the image. Just not for me, at least. And you can work with the vividness, by the way. You can change how vivid the image becomes with the matte setting. In my opinion, once again, it's not something that I would use for this style image. And let me go back to my edits, and let me delete that feature right there. Okay. The next thing we have is, uh, wait, I don't think we even discussed 
Um, erase, at least. Uh, no, we didn't discuss erase. Let me go ahead and discuss this real quick. With erase, you can erase certain sections of the image. So I can go over here, and I can, let's say this image. You guys could see this image. These eyes should not be here, right, in the image. Technically, it should be the sunglasses. So let me now erase certain parts of the image. So I'll go over here, and I'll erase this blue line in the image. Okay, let's go ahead and erase that. There you go, erased. Let's go ahead and erase this. Let me actually change the size of my eraser here. And hit erase. And let me go over here, rather on this eye part, and erase this. There you go, erase. So now, the image is a little bit more erased. Let's go ahead and do the same thing here. Just like that, and now it's more erased here. Okay, let's hit erase there. And let's do the same here, 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 and here. Let's go ahead and do that, and there you go. And so now you can see here, the image almost looks more like a, uh, like a real naturalized image as opposed to having eyeballs right there, which there shouldn't be. It's a little trippy to look at, but it does look a little bit better. And this is one of their AI features, their Erase AI, uh, that will erase certain aspects of the image. I do like that very, very much. Sorry that I missed that out earlier. But let's go ahead and continue. Uh, we have toning. So toning is going to change the tone of the image. I can turn left or right. Let's say we turn the right all the way up, and then we increase the saturation of the image. Right? You could see... The, the image colors do change. We can also play with the hue of those specificities of the image. So, for example, if I want this section to be like a light blue, I actually really enjoy that tone. I can do that, and I can shift what aspect of the image that I want. So, if I want it to be more light blue, I can do that. And I actually do like it, like I said, when it's light blue. Kind of changed the way that the images look, but that's definitely an aspect. Um... These are naturally the highlighted areas of the image, so that's the areas that it targeted. I can also do this with shadows where it will target the specific darker images. So I can, if you look here, I just in change the, the dark side of the images, right? And I can give it a hue, almost like a purple hue if I wanted to. Let's go ahead and drag it into the purplish area. And I could change the saturation of it where it could be very brief, but it could also be very amplified, and I could play around with where it, where it kind of goes here. Um, so like for example, like right here, now it does shift the image entirely. So a lot of these features, guys, can really shift. Let's go ahead and go to mood here. So you have different moods, like for example, we have the creative mood, let's say 1960. You could see if I just literally just hover over my mouse, it will shift the different what we call moods here. And I would really call these moods like presets. They're effectively like presets. They just change the color of the photo. So here you have that Beijing mood, um, which I actually call it like a cyberpunk mood because it's dark, it's purplish, it's lightish in its own way. Uh, it highlights the reds and the purples, and that's kind of a, a good example here. And this is, you know, originally what the image was, and this is what it's become now. It's pretty... Uh, insane, uh, almost miraculous to see how you can change an image from this to this without being a graphic designer of any sort. Here we have dramatic. Of course, we can make the image more dramatic, right? And I personally don't enjoy dr dramatic effect because it will wash out the image a little bit, right? That's just not my style. You can see the change. Um, but I think in certain moments that it might work. Okay, I think in certain moments it could work. So if I increase this dr dramatic here, I can change the effect, right? And you could see how it works there. And you could change also the local contrast of how much it contrasts with behind it. Here we have sun rays. So sun rays are, are cool. They wouldn't necessarily work on this image, but I can increase, like, for example, if I want a sun ray here. Or I can place the sun ray, like, anywhere. You know what I'm trying to say? I can place the sun ray anywhere. Um, let's just say I wanted it here, and I can give it a very, very brief sunray, for example, and I can view how it once looked, how it looks now, and I can turn away from it. it. It just depends on how you want to do it. This is not the type of image that would have a sunray. If anything, this would be more like an image for a sunray. We would go over here, hit edit. 
we would scroll to um, Sunrays, which is right here. Place a Sunray. Maybe even place it at the brightest section of the image, which is like right here. And then increase the amount kind of like that. Look at that. See, in an image like this, it works, right? It definitely works. You can see how it looks. Uh, in the other image, doesn't necessarily work. Just depends on the nature of the actual image, okay? Let's go ahead and continue here. Um, we have now, uh, what else? We have sun rays. We have atmosphere AI, okay? So this will change the atmosphere or the background. So you can see here I turn all the way to the right, and it added this white foggish effect. Not really something, I'll be honest, that I play around with too much. I'm pretty sure it could be very valuable in certain scenarios. I haven't played around with it too much, okay? Um, because most of my images look somewhat like this, uh, because I'd use them for print-on-demand, you can kind of see how it looks. But you can also play around with the lightness of the image, the depth of the image. There's a lot of things you can, you can toggle here. Um, but once again, I can't sit here and admit and say that this is a feature that I've worked a lot with. I haven't. Okay, and then finally we have Relight, which will change the brightness of the image from a depth perspective, okay? It will brighten certain particular aspects of the image, right? So you can see here the different settings that you're playing with when you move it to the left, move to the right. This image, for example, is much darker than what it once was, which was something like this, right? So that's kind of different. Um, and that's the creative aspect, okay? Now we have here portrait, okay? We have portrait bokeh. We have, uh, or bokeh, whatever you want to call it. We have skin, we have face, we have body, and we have high key. This will work more for a portrait type face. Let's actually see if it will work here. It would really more work for this. I'll kind of show you. It would work for more something like this, okay? Let's actually work on this. And we can go over here to the face AI, for example, and light the face. So the AI already knows what aspects of the face are lighter. We can also make it slimmer. Do you see how we just shifted the image, how, how slim the face became now? And that does shift the image, right? It shifts the, almost the identity of the individual. You could see here the before and the after. Pretty cha A pretty crazy change, actually, right? So I can do, and I can run this setting multiple times. So watch this. I just did the first change, which was from here to here. Now let's go ahead and do a more slimming. Let's do it this way. Okay. And there you go. The face now became even slimmer. What about if we do it more? Face became slimmer. Let's actually leave it, let's say, like right here. That's not the same person, pretty much. That's It once looked like this, this, and we thought this face looked natural. Now it looks like this. It's a completely different face. Um, and it's actually pretty crazy that the AI can do this, but it can do it. And it can do it very well. Um, here we have body AI. Okay. The body, let's see if we have an image. This is probably a better image for body AI. Let's go over here and hit edit. And let's go into body AI. And let's work on the shape. So if we want the shape a little bit larger, we drag it here to the left. If we want it skinnier, we put it all the way to the right. And the AI is, is uh, critical and, and very powerful in understanding the curvature of the body and the natural, I guess you can say, hourglass type figure that it wants to uh, work on because here it might widen certain areas and here it might tighten certain areas and then widen again. So you could see the kind of difference, right, that, that it applies. And it's kind of crazy or trippy when you look at it when you're moving it from left to right, move left to right. Let's say we move it all the way to the right and we change that abdomen, we bring in the abdomen to be even tighter. Now you've shifted the identity of that individual like completely, right? So from one person that went like this, or that looked like this, to looking like this, to now like this. So that's kind of a, a crazy change right there. And I, I could definitely see a lot of Instagram models using it. Now, um, let's go ahead and continue here. Let's use, let's use actually this image, right, to kind of do some changes here. Let's go here and hit edit. And let's actually test uh, this feature on this drawing. So if we go to body AI and we go to shape, right? We have now, let's see before. Okay, let's actually put it this way. 
Maybe we can see the difference. Can we see the difference if there's a difference that exists? Yeah, not much of a not much of a difference there. Okay, uh, how about let's get rid of this. Let's change shape. I haven't noticed really any shape change. Maybe the AI cannot pick up on drawings. I'll be honest, I don't usually use these features too much because I don't edit photos for AI. Let's see how. Let's see. It definitely picked up on the on the face light. Let's see if the face becomes slimmer. Here, nope. Okay, yes, it does. It does pick up on the face, how the face became slimmer. So what once looked like this now looks like this. Pretty interesting. Uh, we can work on the eyes as well. We can do an eye enhancer, right, which makes it just a little bit brighter. We have red eye removal, dark circle removal, right, which just makes it a little bit brighter there. Um, iris flare, which are those parts of the eye. We have iris visibility, Kind of like that. Uh, we have improving the eyebrows. So make them a little bit darker. Uh, we can Let's see if we can do something to the skin. Let's see that. We can increase the uh, skin shine removal. I think I like it actually better with a little bit of shine to it. Makes it look a little bit better. Uh, and then body AI. Let's give it one more chance. Um, let's actually see if we can draw it. So... Masking, this is the body, right? All right, let's leave that. And then let's go over here, and let's decrease that shape. Yep, it doesn't really do anything much. I can t I can say that with um, pretty much full confidence. Uh, with this drawing, it doesn't really pick it up. High key, let's see what high key can do here. And it will just make it a little bit brighter. Okay, understood. So yeah, that's that's what these features can do. Pretty cool, actually. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the last bit of settings, and I think this image will work well for it. Um, let's go over here and hit edit, and we have finally our professional uh, edits. We have super contrast, color harmony, dodge burn, dodge and burn, and clone. Let's go ahead and jump into super contrast. Now super contrast is, once again, a color approach. And we can, when we turn Super Contrast all the way up, we can work on the highlight balance. So you could see here, if I want to move this all the way to the right-hand side, give more color to the blue aspects here, I can do that. Let's say I wanted to work on my mid-tones. Mid-tones are not the darkest, not the lightest, but right in the middle. I can make them darker, I can make them brighter, and I can actually alter the balance. Right. So if you see here, these things do shift the image uh, in in the nature that they appear. So for me personally, I'd probably make the midtones a little bit darker with a very, very, very little bit of a brighter balance. And then here we have our shadows. I like to increase the shadows, so I won't move it to the right-hand side, but I'll leave it there and just leave it the way it is. Color harmony, how the images work together in harmony, right? So we want more warmth. We want more heat. Uh, I like to leave this in the middle for an image like this. Um, and then, of course, you can work with the brilliance, right? Or naturally, the hue of the actual image. What is it going to amplify? What aspects? The reds or the the faded colors, the whites? Um, the the Essentially, the colorless colors of the white, you know, the, the lighter tones. Color contrast. Increase the contrast all the way up. Decrease it, right? I call this kind of like a super contrast because that's really kind of what it is. Um... Then finally, we have split color with warmth, and this will create a greater divide amongst the colors, right? So this is less warm, higher warmth, um, and I actually really like this feature. I think it works in certain moments, right? So this image kind of looks kind of dull compared to what it is now, and then we have the lighter effect here and the cooler effect. I actually like it kind of like this. And then finally, we have dodge and burn. So we can lighten, dark, and erase. Let's go ahead and increase here. And this dodge and burn, I'll kind of show you what it does. So let's say we wanted to do it with this fire effect. Okay, so let's do that. And let's go ahead and let's go with the amount that it will lighten. So if it lightens, it will kind of lighten it like that. If I wanted to darken it, right? I'm darkening it kind of like this. I can select those kind of areas that I want to darken. So let's go here, rather, and uh, let's go back, rather. 
and we'll do it like this. I'll go over here and just draw. And right now it's lightening it, but let's say I want to make it darker and decrease that strength or increase that strength rather. The amount, decrease the amount. You can see how it normally got darker. Okay. Um, then finally we have clone. Clone is the source that I want to clone. Let's say I want to clone. Let's actually select this. Yep. Yeah, you can see here kind of how it's been cloned. Okay. You can see here I was cloned multiple times. I can clone this. It actually gives it almost like an echo kind of feeling. But um, let me go ahead and undo those settings right there. Let's undo that clone and let's try this one more time. Professional, clone, and let's say I'm going to clone this. So now you can see I can put it, for example, here and here. Do you see what I'm saying? So just clone that twice. That's an example of cloning. All right. So there's a lot of different features here, and you can make huge changes to this image. It's just a matter of, you know, applying what features you like. Let's go ahead and do a live edit on this design. Okay. This is a pretty neutral design. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my glow, and I'm going to increase my glow here because I want certain parts to be glowing. It really gives a great look to that rainbow. Then I'm going to go over here to my vignette, increase my vignette, make it nice and dark. And I really like this. Like this image right now looks like out of like, uh, what's, those, what's those teddy bears that have like the different kind of characteristics, like happy, sad, what are they called, care bears? Yeah, this could be go. This could be good for like a Care Bear ad, right? You place like a Care Bear on top of it. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and continue. Of course, I wouldn't use sun rays or anything like that. I wouldn't use matte. Um, let's see here. Let's go to super contrast. Increase that super contrast a little bit, and decrease or increase that balance ever so slightly. And then I would go to mystical, increase the mysticism within the image, and then let's finish off with a tiny little bit of glow. And now you can see the image shifted from here to here, completely different image, and I think that's where I would want to keep it. I don't think I would, maybe I would test super contrast a little bit. Yeah, yep. Um, yeah, I think that's where it would sit. I would increase my shadows, so keep it something like this, and that's relatively a cool image for me. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more videos, let me know. You know, we're okay with uh, creating some cool content here, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'll talk to you guys later. See you soon. Peace out. Bye.